Thank you. Hey everybody. What you are about to see here is footage from the National Hollerin Contest. This event used to be held annually uh, in June of every year from 1969 to 2015. It was shot by myself and Jack Ball on Jack's full-size VHS camcorder. Quality is not awesome. Uh, there's a lot of shaky camera. Not too worried about that. Kind of tells the story of the day where a huge storm came through and the whole event got shut down and then moved only a few blocks away to the uh, volunteer fire department. Um, in fact, the, uh, the event was held annually and uh, raised money for the, the fire department there. Um, so here is that footage. Um, Hope you enjoy it. If you were there or you have some other footage from these past years, uh, please let me know in the comments. Um, get in touch with me. We'd love to see more footage from years past. Uh, unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a lot of great information on the internet about who won each year. And I'm kind of surprised there's not some sort of uh, place to find this information. So. Take a look. Shortly thereafter, and uh, just to let them get a young people a hand. I've been to the World Trade Center, lived in New York City. I've been to Red Square in Russia. I've been almost everywhere in the United States, but nothing is going to be as good as this. The 33rd annual Hollering Contest. Is there more? All right, let's hear it for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. The junior hollering champ, John Mark Harry. Congratulations, young man. All right, judges, you can take a break for a few moments. At 5 o'clock, the ladies will begin their contest. If you are in the hunt for the ladies' championship, we remind you that we need you backstage by no later than 10 minutes till 5. By 10 minutes till 5. Now, I know some of you want to stretch your legs and the like. Joyce Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. Contestant 604 is Heather Branch. <laughs> Heather brought her fan club with her. Heather Branch, contestant 604.
Peter Branch rendering a microphone totally needless there. Contestant 605 is Dr. Shirley Rich Baggett. John was never late for dinner. All right, judges, those are our uh, now four contestants. So if uh, you will be deciding our runner-up and also our winner, also want to uh, get the attention of Chad Thompson and Christy Woodard, get them together backstage with us, all right? Everybody's waiting yeah. patiently for the winner. Everybody's waiting patiently for the winner. As they decide. Who's doing? I don't know. That can be from some legitimate news agency. It's kids from the AP Newswire. <laughs> yeah, there they are. AP Newswire, right there, ladies and gentlemen. I went around this guy and got a shot of like the whole impression. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the results are in in the ladies' calling competition at the National Hollering Contest. Second place goes to contestant 601, Kathy Jones. Kathy, come on up. Give us another example of that little engagement thing you were talking about there. This is an example of a young lady who just got the big question pop from her man. She is letting her friend down the corner know that he did pop the question. Congratulations again, Kathy Jones. And the 2001 National Hollering Contest Ladies Calling Champ from Roseboro, North Carolina, contestant 604, Heather Branch. Well, encore before you get your award there, Heather. Here she is, Heather Branch, the ladies' calling champ, the National Hollering Contest. Good God. Give Kathy and Heather one more round of applause. A big holler, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, ladies, thank you very much. The men's contest will start promptly at 6 o'clock. We have some more entertainment for you. First, though, the Midway Band Boosters want us to announce some winners for them. Uh, the winner of the quilt in their drawing is Lori Brown. Winner of the drum set, David Cox. 
The winner of the television is Bambridge Williams. And the winner of the lawnmower, the first place prize, is Tim Stevenson. So, Lori, David, Bambridge, and Tim, if you guys will go to the uh, Midway Band Booster Tent, and uh, they will make sure that you all get set for your prizes there. I want to do one for Minnie Pearl. She says, Hey! I hope y'all have a good day. All y'all's fathers out there, I hope you have a good one tomorrow. This is for y'all. Yakabaka, 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 baby! I got some chickens at home and I call them like this. Chick, 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 <laughs> but more horse gets in the way. She said, "Yeah." And my guy, I got. My, I used to work for a man. He had a burrow, and he goes like this. He goes, "Yeah, <laughs> And I got a little boy. I babysit sometimes. I call him Candy Man, and he goes like this, Candy Man. Better bring that Oreo back! Fairy John Mother's gonna get you! Ah! Have a good day. Contestant 702, Jeffrey Wood. <laughs> well under the deadline, Herman tells us. Contestant 703, TP, you're back again. Okay. But you're not 703, okay. Contestant 703 is Bruce A. Mitchell. Woo! Howdy! Well, when I was home, a long time ago, I used to get out in the field and I'd hide. My mama hollered, Bruce A! Bruce A! You better get out home! Bruce A! Well, you know, one of my favorite songs, and no taking away from the ladies, but you know, I like to do the national anthem. puppy at home and his name is Hobby Juby. He likes to run away once in a while and I holler. Hobby! Hobby Juby! Hobby! Come home Hobby Juby! Then I got some relatives in Switzerland. They kind of holler like this. Good lady! Good lady! Contestant 703, ladies and gentlemen, that's Bruce A. Mitchell. Let's move right along to contestant 704. That's Tyler Jones. Tyler Jones, contestant 704. Right here. 
day, that's a lot of people out there. My name is Tyler Jones. I'm from Duplin County in North Carolina. About 15 years ago, I used to raise beagles. And I had four very special beagles that I spent a lot of time with for about four years. And uh, they were special jump dogs, and I loved to pack them together. Spent a lot of wonderful hours in the woods with them. At the end of a hard day's hunt, I'd have to call them out of the woods. And they'd come a-running because they knew they were going to eat. And I'd like to tell you how I, how I called them out of the woods. By the way, their names were Dugan, Pluka, Coochie, and Red. Contestant 704, Tyler Jones. Now contestant 705 is Tony Peacock. Tony Peacock, contestant 705. Even though it's late in the afternoon, I'd like to greet you with a good morning holler. It goes like this. Uh, Dewey Jackson win the contest, the first one here in 1969, and I love it more now than when I learned it because it's about being simple, but it gets the message across. Hollering was about communication. It was also about self-expression, so I'd like to do my own original holler for you that I learned this year. It was inspired by a legendary holler I had a, a chance to hear as a boy. His name was Leonard Emanuel. You hear it used here a lot. And also by a voice that I heard for the first time this spring. It was uh, taped in 1969, but in Cairo, Egypt. And I was amazed that when you get down to hollering, the voices that touch us on the other side of the world are very much like the ones that touch us here. Oh, one more and this one isn't real loud but it's an expressive holler I love and it gets a little loud if I can do it in the middle when you want to reach across to the woods to your neighbor Oh, 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 oh,
Contestant 705 is Tony Peacock. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to issue a run for cover holler. All right? Please run for cover for your safety. We will be resuming hopefully in the next 10 or 15 minutes as soon as this cloud passes by. We don't want to endanger anyone. Please find yourself a safe area at your car or what have you, and then rejoin us for the conclusion. But please move quickly and safely. Thank you. Yeah, I'll right here. Robert! Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Another 15 minutes. Yeah. Be a little bit longer. Yeah. Hey, ball. That's good. Where are you going, Robert? I have a feeling I may lose that. What? I think I have a feeling I'll lose this. I'm still going. Alright, keep it running. Yeah. Is that dude the first one? Where? The duckhead dude? Yeah. Not well, so much for shelter. It's coming down right on you. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably blowing. You know what? We gotta go in the dugout. That one? Here, here. Hey, down. No, I was going to say the dugout one. Yeah, right. 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 Well, I think it is. I was involved in the storm in 93. And you, but we called it a low pressure hurricane. And I was on uh, this close to a water fire. This close. That is just a water fire. I was on the water. Oh, my God. I was on the river at the time. You mean, you're about to close to the water fire in order to this pole? Yeah. Good God. And one thing about it, I was trying to get my friend's attention to his dad on letting him leave. And then we were coming in, I had to get my big yell. That's how I got. We're doing a good job here. We've been blown away. What's your name? Bruce. Bruce? Let's see. Where are you from again? Shiloh, North Carolina. Okay. Have you beat it before? No, this is the first time. Okay. First time. Decided to come up and give it a shot. Cool. We've been listening to a lot of it. We've tried to get up here the past three years. This is the first time I've had a chance to get up here. Come on, give it a try. But I tell you what, I feel that guy up there, the last guy. I mean, he, he knows what he's doing. He's been here before. Didn't he win once? He won before, yes. Tony Peacock. That's good. Oh, you got new people once in a while. There you go. Maybe they'll have sympathy on the new guy. Maybe the storm messed him up. <laughs> There's no film crews here? I know. I filmed all the film crews. I know. <laughs> They're all over the place. So, actually, the, the Turner. Okay, Dave, give us the progress. Okay, we just got told by one of the contestants that. Uh, Due to the weather, they're moving everything to the Spivey's Corner Let's get a fire department. Get a closer to that. I guess nah, the, uh, you can't get it because of the whole stupid rain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it don't matter. It's all right. Look at this guy filming we, people coming in. Yep. There's yeah. like four documentary. There's like documentary here. crews here by the pound. Like these doors right here. This guy with the slippy dude here. Yep. yep. We're gonna find a parking spot. Well, all right. We made the correct call again for the field clear just in case that storm came our way. So we appreciate y'all cooperating and making your way over here. Yes, we didn't have all four judges. That's right. Judges were going on just like they are. Precisely. And also, no deductions we made because we don't have microphones. All right. We finished at uh, 7.05, right? right? We're up to 7.06. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dick Graham. Hi, everybody. Anybody here from Charlotte? Anybody here from Charlotte? 
any Charlotte Panthers fans? Woo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm the only one here. Well, uh, okay, uh, I'd like to sing a, do a, do a call sing song style, you know, dedicated to Buddy Holly, one of my favorite rock and roll stars. If you knew Peggy Sue, then you know why I feel blue about Peggy, my Peggy Sue. Oh, well, I love you, Sal, and I need you, Peggy Sue. Okay, here's another one. Kansas. I hope none of you are from Wichita. And I woke up, you know, one night, I found a cockroach on my back, and I'm going to do an impersonation of like that guy in The Godfather. And it goes like this. Ah! 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 A cockroach! A cockroach! Anybody want to take half a step in? Yeah. So that one no, yeah, you won't need an exterminator. Contestant 707 is Kevin Jasper. Can we go in a little bit more? Yeah, we're here at the hollering contest again. I want to thank all my family and friends for being here and sticking with me throughout all this. Again, this year I want to concentrate on the expressive hollers because those are the hollers done just for fun. And the hollering contest was started and is here to preserve the folk art and the folk tradition of these expressive hollers. And so I want to do those that are unique to this area here around in Sampson County. The first one I want to do is the, an old timey holler that Mr. Floyd Lee did. It goes like this. Ha -hoo -hoo! Ha -hoo -hoo! Waters holler. And I'm going to do a shorter version of it. And it, uh, I'm going to add a little thing to it, a little Flintstones thing at the end. And uh, I'm not trying to make fun of hollering, but I'm trying to make hollering fun. <laughs> here on this. I'm used to a big wide open area. <laughs> anyway, it goes something like this. It's an old 1800s fun song. It goes something like this. Quit that tickling me. Oh, quit that tickling me. Well, I wish you'd go and let me be. Hey, quit that tickling me. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Oh, 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 oh. Well, I wish you'd go and let me be. Hey, quit that tickling me. <laughs> did a holler that was called a ditty. That's D as in dog, I-T-T-Y. It's one where you make a sound as you inhale as well as when you exhale. And I'll try to do it for you here. Today I'll do my version of it. It's a, I'm going to add a few key things to this holler. One of them is maybe a key change. The other thing is the Key Brothers. I want you kids of all ages to listen for the Key Brothers. That's Mr. Don Key and Mr. Monkey. Mr. Donkey and Mr. Monkey. All right? Oh, 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 oh,
Thomas, and because of the move, we will allow him, if he shows up before we conclude the contest, to jump in. Contestant 709 is Tim Smith. 709, Tim Smith. I thought Tim was here. We missed Tim? 709. Okay. All right, same thing with Tim. Contestant 710 is Roby Morgan. 710 Rosemore. Yeah! 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 91 on a special category, and then the runner up time or two, or something like that. But go, the, uh, it's good to be here. The lovely people love all of you. It has nothing to do with calling hogs, cows, pigs, the almost lost part of Holly. Like in the olden days when they had no television, had no TV, radio. It was a way of life, a way of communicating. You had a regular Holly, good morning Holly, stress Holly. And so uh, you'd holler to your neighbor, he'd holler back. And so it goes like this, you go out and call, call your neighbor, and uh, he'll answer back. Because you, you people answer back now, you inspire the storm. You <laughs>
Texas and you're going to be gone. <laughs> Contestant 711 is Shay Collins. 711, Shay Collins. My name is Shay Collins. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina, but I moved from Raleigh, from Wilmington, North Carolina. I heard my granddad do a pick call, and I'm going to try to do that, him take that pick call I heard from my granddad. <laughs> One last one I can think of. That's the one I was going out and get real excited. Go. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Yeah! yeah. yeah. That's Jay Collins, ladies and gentlemen. Now we know what a baby distress holler is. Contestant 712 is Dr. David Clark. First off, I have to say, I'm humbled to be here with some real hollers. I, I came down, I just had to see this for myself. I, uh, I drove 475 miles last night through the rain. I think I brought it with me, sorry. Uh, came with my wife and, and my dog and uh, came this far. Anybody else uh, from that far away? San Francisco. All right, San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, Welcome. I'm truly humble. Uh, especially the fans that will sit out in, in blazing sun all day long, sweating juju beans, and, uh, and brave the rain and come and squash in this little uh, room. I, I wasn't sure I was going to holler, and I, I sure didn't think it was going to be this up close and personal. But, uh, <laughs> But anyway, it was meant to be, right? We're all we're all believers here, and I think I think God has a plan for everything. I think I think we're in this room according to God's plan. So, uh, Amen. I, you know, I'm from the north. You can probably tell by the way I talk. <laughs> uh, a lot of things are the same up north as you have down here in the south, but uh, some things are different now. Uh, we have conch shells up north, and, and we can blow them too. We don't know if we have any contests where we blow conch shells. But uh, you all have fox horns down here. Now, we don't even have horns on our foxes up north. I never saw a fox horn until today. But I, I like to, I like to uh, learn new things, and I like to teach people new things. And I thought I had, I had just one little holler that I'd bring down here today for you. And, and uh, I like to teach it to children. My uh, my wife and I are involved with the youth group in our church, and we just love to teach kids how to tie their shoe or or how to holler. And we have a special holler that uh, we it started out as a joke, and we started teaching it to to kids, and it was just a good laugh. But then we started hearing from their parents because, well, now this is for you kids. I want you to, if your parents aren't here, you can surprise them with this. You teach them this holler, <laughs> and usually kids, I don't know why, but they usually choose to do it at the dinner table. Anyway, now, there were some kids today that, that called some cats. They had they were calling their cats. Some little girls were calling their cats. And we, we do it the same way up north. We say, here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Psst, 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 psst. Here, kitty, kitty. Psst, 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 psst. That's how we call our cat. But I never, I never known anybody to have a, a call for their deaf cat. And so I came up with a call for a deaf cat. Okay? Watch your lens on this one. It goes like this. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty! <laughs> <laughs> now that's all there is to it. Yeah! <laughs> Sorry. But uh, if, if you adults aren't involved in a youth group or your church, doesn't have one, boy, kids need a, a positive role model. Now, I don't know if my deaf cat call does a <laughs> positive role model, but it's, it's a lot of fun. I know we get a lot of laughs, so uh, get involved with kids. It's great. I, I love to see the kids here. Thank you very much. Contestant number 
seven fourteen. Daniel Brown. Did I miss one? I'm sorry, Larry. That's the seven thirteen. Larry Jackson. Thank you. One thing I might ask you to do if I do anything in life to cheer, because I'm always afraid when I get finished and people cheer, I'm not sure if they're glad I'm finished. Or they like water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do some old time holler for you. One for good morning holler, also a signature holler. Farmers, when they get up and go out and feed their animals, they'd holler and their neighbors holler back. Everybody in the community didn't know everything was fine in everybody's house. It went like this. Hey, oh, 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 then the neighbor holler back. Hey, oh, 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 a useful, thank you, thank you. Thank you. A useful holler that we used to have was called a locator holler. But people did a lot of traveling and, and going out hunting in the woods and picking blueberries and they'd get lost, they'd have to holler. And a locator holler went like this. Hey, boop, 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 hey, boop, 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 hey, boop, boop, boop. Then you were listening. When someone heard that, they would holler back, and you'd know how to get out of the woods. You could hear the direction of their holler and follow that. Because otherwise, you could be out there walking around for hours in the woods. Another thing that they used to do was an old time holler tradition that's almost lost. And it's learning to holler when you breathe out and holler when you breathe in. That was done with some old tunes, and I'll give you an example. <laughs>
that maybe some of you, how many of you here are here for the first time in 33 years? Oh, wow. All right, well, we like, like, like our preacher does. Any of you got any of those that have not been here before? You got a testimonial for this. Ermin, yes. I want to say one thing while we got everybody together. Yeah. Go back closeness. I'll tell y'all something. This is closeness. On behalf of the fire department, we appreciate each one of you for all of you coming up here this afternoon. While you're up here, while we wait, we've started putting together just a little bit of history about the Calvary Contest and the fire department. And it's not much because, I mean, it's hard to go back and pull stuff up from a long time ago. This picture's right here are from the very first winners of National Holland Country. Yeah. They might want to come by and see what survivors going to look like. So, uh, and there's a couple of things up here. These old, I mean, this is used to be a calendar. All right, the story of that, 1971, Scott Paper Company, and these are 1970. Uh, Scott Paper Company did a calendar called Americana. He had only 12 months, and fortunately they chose Five Inch Corner as the sixth month. And this was only a cover of the June calendar, of course it had the month down under. And I called them and asked them if they had any left. And he said, well, we don't have a 1500 left. <laughs> and I said, well, what would it cost? He said, so we've got some of those wrapped up for posterity, and one of these days those things might be worth 50 cents. <laughs> 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 we've had a lot of good times with the tolerant contest, but I haven't heard anybody say they got a testimonial about the tolerant contest for your first time. That's it for seats to be broken. What? Let them see if he's up there. There she is up here. He's counting money. 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 He's Incidentally, we found four cases of hanging chads and the judges were still understand some of you will see a doctor for that condition later on. Anyway, um, they wanted me to express to you that this may have been their toughest moment of the day, and that's why they did spend so much time. In fact, so much that although we don't have a trophy for it, they wanted to award an honorable mention per se. And that goes to contestant 705, Tony Pika. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Third place in the 33rd annual National Hollering Contest, the first to be held in two locations that I know. Right. Is contestant 710, Roby Morgan. basically split hairs and figure out who was going to be a runner-up and who was going to be a champion. It came down to being that close. All right? Judges, you're free to leave now if you'd like to before we do that. <laughs> Actually, before we do that, I would like to ask you for a round of applause for these folks. Who came out. is a judge and 
and he is a superior court judge. The 33rd Annual National Hollering Contest is contestant 707, Kevin Jasper. <laughs> Let me do uh, uh, a hymn that uh, was done. Kevin Jasper, if you want to wake him up in church tomorrow morning, do that version. <laughs> All right. Again, thank you for your patience with us today. Third Saturday in June each year. We kind of hit it early this year. So uh, next year, the third Saturday in June, we will see you here. And uh, the gentleman who will be defending his title at that time, the winner of the 33rd Annual National Hollering Contest, is contestant number 713. Larry.